And here to talk about the importance of second opinions is NBC's medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Good morning, Natalie. Good morning, Hoda. I was kind of surprised about this. I thought when you had a biopsy like Rita did, it was black or white, like you got good news or bad news. But that's not the case, is it's not it? not the case. That's what a lot of people think. And this is, this is very timely. This comes on the heels of a really important study that we reported on a few weeks ago that concluded that one out of every four breast biopsies that's, that's read is read mm -hmm. incorrectly. Wow. And the take-home message there was that at the extremes, if you have obvious cancer or if you have an obvious benign lesion, they were usually correct. But in the middle, in the middle. these precancerous lesions, there was a lot of room for error. That's so shocking. I think a, a lot of the reasons people don't go get second opinions is, number one, they're not 100% sure their insurance will cover it. True. And number two, they've been with their doctor forever and they say, well, he or she probably knows best. That's exactly. not the best advice, though, is not it? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. And we want to sort of say from the outset that everybody is entitled to a second opinion. Sure. It can be something as mundane as, you know, you have arthritis in your knee to a major cancer diagnosis. You can always seek a second opinion. All right, let's go through some things. Yes. Number one, scans. You get a scan. Is that something, a, you know, a breast scan or whatever? Should you get a second opinion on that? Not necessarily all the time, but I think a few things to remember here. Number one, it, and I don't want to take anything away from radiologists. They do a tremendous job training to know mm -hmm. how to read these things. But it also has to do with your experience. If you're reading breast, mam if you're reading mammograms all day for 20 years, for example, um, you're going to have more expertise. So certain cases like MRIs and x-rays and CAT scans and mammograms, you, you know, th there are mm -hmm. certain criteria criteria the radiologist has to look for, but there is some subjectivity. It is read by a human at the end of the day. Okay, biopsies. You yes. say always second opinion? Um, I would. Yeah. I would. I really, really would. And again, for the reason that with these middle lesions, as we sort of call them, they, you know, there are very, and you can see in the monitor mm -hmm. right now, on the left, we have a normal breast biopsy, and on the right, we show a, a cancerous lesion, the, the, the invasive lobular mm -hmm. carcinoma that she was diagnosed with. And cer certainly at first blush, they, they look a little bit different, but if you get in there really, really closely, there are so many specific things the pathologist has to look for and count and measure and everything like that. At the end of the day, there is a lot of inter-reader variability. Let's talk about other second opinions not related to cancer, but let's mm -hmm. say you're diagnosed, you, you need medicine for hypertension or blood pressure, those right. kind of things that have side effects, these meds. Correct. Is that something you should check with a second doctor I, about? I usually like to recommend that, especially if this is if it's going to be a chronic maintenance medicine. Right. You want to know, are there other alternatives? Is the doctor aware of side effects and are they monitoring for them. This is not, we're not talking about a quick course of antibiotics, but something that the doctor anticipates that you will be on for a long period of time. And they say if you have a gut feeling, you should get a second opinion. And for surgery, you say always, you know, if it's elective surgery, should you always get a second opinion? I, again, I always recommend yeah. this. I say this to my patients all the time. One will say you need a knee replacement. The other one will say you don't need a knee replacement. And I think, and sometimes if there's a differing opinion, you get a tiebreaker. And what Rita Wilson did, she had two different readings. She had the initial one, which was yeah. normal or pleomorphic. She had had one pathologist who read it as malignant, as invasive. She had a third pathologist confirm that it was invasive carcinoma, and she went and had the surgery. Wow, that was great for her. Stand by. Tamron's in the orange room right now where people are sharing some of their experiences. Hey, Tamron. Hey there, Hoda. Some compelling stories on our Facebook page from viewers of the show. Jenny posted this one to us. I went to the doctor complaining of shortness of breath. He shrugged it off. The next day, I went to the ER where they told me I had multiple bilateral pulmonary embolism. Luckily, I went with my gut feeling patty sent this one. One doctor told me my symptoms were all in my head. The next doctor I saw did a CT scan and indeed the diagnosis was different. A brain tumor. The second doctor said my tenacity saved my life. So you can keep the conversation going on our Facebook page for today. Hoda. Wow, that, that trust your gut is so important in all of these, isn't it? Absolutely. And Rita Wilson says herself, she said she just didn't feel comfortable with that with that diagnosis. She was encouraged mm -hmm. by a friend to get a second opinion right. and she did it. All right, Dr. Natalie Azar, thank you so Thanks, much. Soda.